Hey, everybody. Zach Welcome your dumb ass. to the first take, <laughs> episode 36. I'm getting interrupted. Uh, I'm Justin DeSimone, joined by my co-hosts, the Juggernauts. <laughs> Favorite bitch, I think I've said that before, Montreal Rice. Hey, what's up, what's up? How's it going, man? Living life. He doesn't want to talk to me. He wants to get through the show snappy. No, he's telling no, me, no, no, he's no, no, gonna, no, no, He was no, telling no, me no, he's no. not going to talk about the no, games I'm, he's playing. I, I am. This motherfucker's on a schedule, okay? Yeah. He's got to get out of here promptly. Hey, man. But you all know how we are. Yeah. We're going to go two I'm hours. Not, so you're not gonna, I'm not going to go. You're I'm, not getting out here. probably leave in like 11. You're not or getting out of here like before that. 10. <laughs> you're not getting out of here before 10. So, for those of you who have not listened before, the Player's Take is our weekly show where we talk about video games, video game news, and other <coughs> topics pertaining to video games, usually for two hours plus. Uh, we post at 6 a.m. Central Time on Fridays on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and your favorite podcast app of choice. For Montreal's schedule, let's just jump right in. <laughs> what have you been playing, sir? Or do you want me to talk first? Because I have a lot to talk about. Well, I have a lot to talk about, too. So okay. I, I'll go. I'll right, just talk shit. Right. But, yeah. So, um, I've been playing. I'm going to start with Monster Hunter uh, Iceborne. I've okay, I'll talk now. about this, too. Yeah. Um, I like the game a lot, but now I'm starting to see the gripes in it. You know, I know I was... The very, blemishes are showing. Yeah, I was very uh, excited about it last week. But uh, one gripe I do have with the game is that it revolves around your Cutch Claw. And uh, weakening the monster's parts to do more damage. Yeah. So you don't have to you don't have to spam the clutch claw to do the to damage to the parts, but you do have to. You can though. You can. Yeah, and I was starting to get into that last night. Yeah. Um, we'll get into why I started playing Monster Hunter World last night, but um, I only did three missions. Yeah. I fought Beatotus twice, and then I just did like a small monster hunt to get some materials. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, the clutch claw I noticed is is a big part of the gameplay. Yeah, it like, is. Um. And I've been on the Reddits and subreddits and stuff like that. And a lot of people are telling me to reduce m- hunting time. You know, you have to use it. Use the Cutch Claw and do your combos on that set part that you weakened. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've been doing. Um, and my times have been noticeably shorter when I did that. Um, I, I, I noticed that when you said that yesterday, that it does make sense because it is easier to get materials in this game for armor pieces. Mm-hmm. So in the older games, you had to hunt a monster maybe about 30, nah, I'm not 30 times, maybe 15, no, 10 to 15 he's times. he's not kidding. It might have been 30 times. Yeah, maybe. I've done it in the past. Yeah, to get a, to get an armor set and the weapon that you wanted from that particular monster. Yeah. Um, depending on the rarity of the items that drop. So with this game, they definitely nerfed the shit out of that. You may only have to hunt the monster maybe five times yeah you'll get rare materials like the gems or whatever yeah. or the plates or whatever off monsters a lot more often than you used to exactly but the hunts are now longer so they may last for 20 to 25 minutes and if you're really good you can get the hunts down for 10 to 15 minutes um so i guess that's a that's a good trade-off in my opinion mm-hmm. but some like i just said like it was just noxiously noticeable the last couple of days when I was hunting the uh, the dogma or the doggo dodo gamma dodo gamma dodo gamma I was getting consistent crit hits on him with my hammer and hitting his weak points and stuff like that and it still took me 15 minutes to beat him when normally that probably would have been like a 5 or 10 minute run yeah well, uh, the clutch claw yeah I saw a noticeable uptick in damage it like doubled damage output, yes at least it might have even been more than that I think they should take get rid of the damage modifier and I think it's only there because the game just came out yeah. Um, so maybe they'll get rid of that damage reduction modifier because it has been confirmed already that they have a damage d- reduction modifier in Master Rate. Why you mean on ha- the monsters in general? Yeah, like, the monsters. You're in doing general. less damage. Yes. Yeah. Why so, would they do that? I I don't know. That seems weird that they would do that. Because the monsters that you as you play more, the monsters do get tougher. Yeah. They do. So, um, it is very it's very noticeable in faster monsters like yeah. the uh. O- Odagaran. Odagaran. and <laughs> I just have a tough time pronouncing their fucking names. Like the uh, uh, yeah, Acidic Glavius and uh, Diablos, it's super noticeable because those okay. monsters are like really fast, but you got to get big hits on them. Mm. Stuff like that. So, uh, but besides that, I do, I have a new found love in the love, or the love sword, the long sword, uh, because <laughs> the, the love sword, the lower so, the love sword, love sword. Uh, I love the countering mechanics in it. Yeah. I've kind of mastered it. I've actually just, I went into the training, well, not the training mode, but like the arena mode and I fought the Tigrex like five times just to master it. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
Are you pretty, kicking its ass now? Yeah, I'm kicking its ass. Like, Good. Th- it made the game way really simpler against monsters like that. Shove your sword in its eye <laughs> an extra time, <laughs> even when it's dead. Just keep hitting the corpse. Don't even skin it when you're done with the, with the hunt. Just keep hitting it. Just keep hitting just it. Hitting, yeah, I mean, hey, man. That monster sucks. Fuck, Fuck that monster. Fucking hate that monster. Yeah, I used to love that monster, but in this game, he's obnoxious. He's it's, always been fucking obnoxious. It's just really... You keep it's, saying that. He's always no, been man, obnoxious. It's just really, really noticeable in he's this a game. Bag. It's really noticeable. It's a shit bag. His weapons better not be good. because His I don't weapons have, still have that... Um, I don't want to have to farm him. Yeah, his weapons still have that negative affinity thing going on because okay. that's what they had last time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can get rid of that if you get the gems and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um... So, I do have Breath of the Wild on here, but it's not for me. My yep. girlfriend's been playing Breath of the yep. Wild, and she fucking loves this. She doesn't want to admit it, but she fucking loves this game. Like, she's playing it. She's going at her own pace. So, I kind of draw, drew me back from last week when we were talking about it going more hardcore. I think they still can do that if they make, like, maybe two different versions of it or something of that nature. Or maybe a different well, I don't mode. know if we talked... I don't remember when we talked about this. It was last week. No, no, like, did we talk about it on the pod? I, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, if, No, we, no, what I'm about to say, I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast, was, oh. like, making a Master Quest version of the game, which yeah. they did do with Breath of the Wild, which is, like, way harder. Yeah. But the combat Do that same. in the future in the base game where you have a normal normal level and you have a master rank level that's unlocked when you beat the game. Yeah, yeah. And you design the combat in such a way that in normal you don't have to use everything at your disposal to be successful. Yeah. But in master rank you do, you know. Yeah. And I think Zelda is that good medium though, as of right now. Um, it's difficult enough for for her to play it and mm-hmm. understand it. Yeah. Um, but she doesn't have to know all the button prompts and things of yeah. that nature. Yeah. Um, but you know, Zelda has always been that, in my opinion, that perfect median between yeah. casual and hardcore. Mm-hmm. Everyone really loves the game, except for uh, what was it called? Skyward Sword. I fucking hate that one. But I've never played it. I fucking hate it. You had to use the Wii. I know the Wii Plus. I know. It was, oh, Motion terrible. Plus. Yeah, it was so terrible. But um, <clears throat> so I was at, I think the game's good from from what I played, and she definitely I think she got like ten or fifteen shrines already. So she's moving along. She's discovered the great fairy and everything like that. She has some complaints of the game. She yeah. said she fucking hates you know having to press A to uh, progress the dialogue when they're like talking with his voice dialogue. She doesn't like having to press A. It should just go through. Like interesting, yeah. Fire Emblem does have that option that you can yeah. auto scroll. Yeah, and she she said That's it should have that. She's like, I don't like that shit. Like that shit's yeah. stupid. Just talk, motherfucker. I kind of agree. Yeah, <laughs> I think every game should have the option to auto scroll the text, or yeah, dialogue rather when characters are speaking. Because yeah, like if the, if the cutscene is long enough, you're just gonna lay back and you know. Yeah, I can enjoy. eat some popcorn. Eat some, some shit. popcorn. Yeah. yeah, you know. So take a sip of your drink. Uh, in that aspect, it is cool to see it from a, like a person who doesn't play video games, a really casual person, and I'm glad she's mm-hmm. enjoying it. Um, yeah. It did take me back a little bit on my hardcore view of the game, but I still want a hardcore version of Zelda. But that's just me. Well, I, 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 we, <laughs> I guess I could just play Dark Souls. <laughs> we t- we talked about this though. Is that first of all, we both believe that they can design Zelda in a way that appeals to both casual players and hardcore players. Like, yeah, like I was just talking about with the difficulty thing. And it's um, just what I want. I don't. Yeah. That, just because I want it doesn't mean it should be. That. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that yeah, way. Like, no, I'm not saying this is the all be all. Yeah. The, the likelihood of them doing anything that we said is like f- less than 5%. Yeah. Like, they're going to continue to make Zelda accessible. Like, yeah. I don't care what difficulty they add to the game, the game will still be accessible. That's always been their design philosophy with basically all their games. Yeah. And that's going to continue to be their design philosophy. So, I, I hope, hopefully, people don't get us wrong when we talk about this stuff. The things that we suggest that we want to see games like kind of do. It's it's not some end all be all. I don't I don't yeah, think it's authoritatively yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the best way for them to move forward. It's just some things that I would like to see in the game exactly. that would make it appeal to me more and make me like it more. Yeah, it's just. But what that, if they did this? Yeah. Or what if 
Would, exactly. Yeah, so. Look, if you dis- <laughs> if you disagree with our take, you know what? Send us a message on Twitter. We'll have a discussion with you guys. Send a question in or, or send a comment and we'll read it and then we will dissect it because that's what we want to do on the player's take. Yeah. That's what we want to do. I do like to debate different viewpoints. Yeah. Just don't be all snippy with me. I hate that shit. Well, yeah. Well, don't be assholes to us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like I don't, I don't feel like my viewpoint is objectively correct. With this stuff, it's just you know. I, I like because when our other friend Dennison challenges our viewpoint, it makes us think like we're like, "Holy shit, we didn't think about that from that perspective," or we have a nice debate about it. Yeah, yeah. So I like that, but yeah, um, I haven't been playing Wild Classic. I don't know why it's on the list, but I do intend to play it some more. I'm just stuck on uh, I would say Bloodborne, I Iceborne. I haven't played it either. So. <laughs> um, I've had a fun week with games. Weird week, so. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses on the list. Nothing to say about it. Barely played it, uh, but I did play it. Um, Borderlands Three. So I beat Borderlands Three on Sunday. Yeah. And the game, I feel a little bit more positive about it than I did last week and the week before. The story does get better at the end. Okay. They reveal some lore bits that really tie the story together in a great way. Okay. Um, and there's some reveals that were really cool from a lore standpoint of Borderlands that doesn't change my feeling on the characters, the new characters they've added. I still hate Ava, and I still hate the Calypso twins, and, and a lot of the new characters I don't like. Um, the Calypsos later in the game get a lot less stream... Like, they, they drop the streamer persona for the yeah. most part. There's a few scenes where they keep it, but for the most part, they drop the streamer persona and just become more serious in general. And the game becomes... The story becomes way more bearable when that happens. Okay. You know? Um, it they, they just... They're not as annoying on screen. Their motivations become more clear, and things start to make more sense. Right? Um, and... Ava continues to be annoying. She's <laughs> annoying the whole time. There's no no question about that. I don't like her. Um, I think it, a lot of people, all the reviews of her, of, of Watch, rather, said that she's, like, one of the most annoying characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't really deserve the, the spotlight credit. She gets. Yeah, yeah, the spotlight yeah. she gets and the credit that she gets because she doesn't really do anything. And also, the, pro- the, well, the other unfortunate part is, is they set her up to be basically the main the main person and the, the main game. NPC going forward yeah. like the one you're going to be dealing with going forward hopefully they and change your attitude because they I, I mean I, so. I, I've had had games where that has been the case and then yeah. to me like Devil May Cry for example Nero was that character he's just annoying the shit when we first yeah. met him but then everyone loved to learn him like in the later game so yeah, well, hopefully, I'm, I'm going to assume they'll probably, whatever they do with the DLC, but the next game, yeah. I'm assuming there will be another time jump. Hopefully, they actually just age her up, give her a new voice actress, and change her personality. And that's going to be their opportunity to fix this. Yeah. Um, I hope they do that. She's not in the game that much. Like, it's not like she's all over the place. Like, but the simple fact that she has that much of an impact. Yeah, shows how bad of the writing is on that character. It's one of the worst written characters I can remember. Like it, she, she, she shouldn't be anywhere near the battlefield that she's on. Like she has no business being a part of anything that you're doing. Yeah, and she's just inserted into everything you're doing. Like she's literally considered your like peer. You know, like yeah. she's fighting on the front lines with you. It's like. She's like when you initially meet her, Maya's like literally like this kid can't do fucking anything. <laughs> like she's like she's she I I literally have to protect her from herself because she's not very good at fighting. Yeah. Like she's like I have to tell her to stand over here and do nothing because if she does, I'm gonna have to protect her. You know. And yeah. That, that's exactly how it goes. Like. Uh, it yeah and in th- there's no moment in the game where you feel like she's gained pr- appreciable power like she doesn't yeah, yeah. and the power she does get is not earned um and she doesn't i don't know like there's confrontations with the villains where she's present and i don't understand how she even survives like it's literally just they wrote it that way <laughs> Deus you know? Ex Machina stuff. yeah, it, yeah. It, just, it just doesn't make any sense so she's a big problem with the game's narrative um but overall the actual plot like the events that happen in the game 
are largely fine. I, I largely don't have a problem with most of them. It's really just the characters themselves. I will say the back half of the campaign really does drag. Okay. Um, the game gets bloated, and this ha- I think this has happened in every <coughs> Borderlands game. They just they just add missions that don't need to be there. Like okay. There, there's missions in the game, and dude, there's a mission where uh, Penn and Teller are are voicing the the villains you're fighting for the mission, and that whole mission doesn't need to be in the game. Like I'm sorry, it's just like it's like a whole mission just so Penn and Teller can be in the game. Okay, you know, it's like it yeah. just felt a little little much for me. <laughs> um, so I didn't really like that. There's a couple other missions like that too, where you just kind of feel like you're being told to go do something just to waste your time. And, yeah. Um, I think they could have shortened the game by taking those out. I will say the third planet you go to, or fourth planet you go to, sorry, um, Eden Six is probably my favorite planet. Um. Uh, that is um hammerlock is heavily involved in that planet and um i still like him a lot as a character okay and they introduced some new characters on that planet too that i like um that i enjoy okay um so there, it, it was a mixed bag i will say the bosses i mentioned the bosses last week the fights being very good there are a few duds in there um, okay there's one fight where you have to kill a boss like fucking six times <laughs> um and like he's a goliath that continuously like levels himself up you know how goliaths do yeah that. yeah um well yeah he does it like six times and you basically have to kill him like six times it's okay ridiculously annoying um and then there's a second goliath boss fight um where you run into an anointed for the first time mm-hmm. and this fucking goliath teleports around the room right next to you and smashes you in the fucking face you can't get away from him i had to exploit it to get past the fight like it was that ridiculous like it, he was unbeatable i couldn't beat him with Zane, it was ridiculous, dude. Um, that's another thing. Zane um, was noticeably not very good, um, and then they they issued a hot fix late last week. Um, yeah, kind of making both of his action skills do more damage, and it significantly helped with him. Like he was way more fun to play after okay. the hot fix. So they are dedicated to balance. Um, there is an event going on that started today for the month of October for the twentieth an- or tenth anniversary rather of Borderlands the series. Um, they're going to be doing a lot of in-game events. I'm sure the new first DLC will be out. Yeah, it's October first. The next month or two. So, um, <clears throat> I, I'm, like, the thing is, I don't know if I'm looking forward to that at this point. I'm, I, I. So this is what happened. I beat Borderlands three on Sunday because I wanted to play Cube World on Monday. And yeah. I'm going to get into Cube World here in a second. But um, now that I'm done with Borderlands three, I like didn't know what to do with myself because. I guess let me just get into Cube World. So Cube World came out yesterday, a Monday, the day before recording. And uh, that game is basically an unmitigated disaster. Um, and I don't people- think it's facetious. Like, I don't think it's a facetious disaster. I think the creators are, like how he's explain, just have really bad anxiety with handling. I think they're in over their heads. Yeah, yeah. They need help, and they don't want it. And it's really hurting their game. Yeah. Um, so, long story short, I'm going to talk about Cube World more in depth in a second. Long story short, I didn't buy Cube World for the reason, reasons I'll talk about. Um, but then I'm, like, sitting there yesterday, and, dude, I talked to you about it. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to do now, though. Like, <laughs> what do I play? Do I keep playing Borderlands 3? Do I go back to Fire Emblem? Do I go back to Zelda? Do I get back into Fell Seal? Do I buy Cross Code? Do I buy Monster Hunter? I don't know what to do right now. Yeah. And I ended up landing on Monster Hunter because you're into it. Uh, somebody else from work's into it. And uh, Dennison might be getting it maybe too. Yeah. Iceborne. And I kind of want to play while you guys are playing. Yeah. Um, I don't want to play this in like six months when no one no one's playing it anymore. Yeah. So I got Iceborne. Um, I, only had t- I only had a couple hours last night to play, but... Um, you know, I, I I didn't get very far, so like we talked about, I don't really have much of an opinion on it yet. But um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm sitting right now. Is like I downloaded the demo for CrossCode. You like came up to me yesterday and you were like, you were like, I don't understand what's happening with you right now. Like you're you're you're, you're like lost. Like you're like I was like looking at this like high tail game. I fell into this fucking rabbit hole with Cube World. Yeah, like yeah. learning about it. So what happened with Cube World was. This game uh, had an alpha six years ago, and um, people loved it, and that's why this game got really hyped. Is it had a it had a uh, alpha, and in that alpha there were four classes. 
um, ranger, warrior, rogue, and mage. And there was a leveling system and gear drops and all sorts of stuff. And the game had open exploration and everything. And then um, there was a beta uh, last week that ran for a week prior to the game coming out. And he announced the release date of the 30th. And uh, the beta didn't have any experience anymore. The progression was gone. There were yeah. no skill trees. There were no. There was no experience gaining. The classes were still there, but the only form of progression was gear progression. And the game um, locked your gear to a specific zone. And the game's whole entire world map was split into a bunch of different zones. So if you you say you'd get like a bunch of five star gear in one zone, you go to the next zone, you couldn't use any of that gear anymore. Like you had to start from scratch basically, and um, that's the whole game. Like you just go from zone to zone, find gear, and you get an artifact if you do certain things in the zone. Um, but those artifacts don't give you anything meaningful. They give you like run speed bonuses and like swim speed bonuses and like people it's like pe- people hate it like they, they really are upset about this game because um i went i i kind of dug a little bit i went on twitter um and looked at the creator's twitter account and he had posted screenshots of the game in january and in january the screenshots still had experience and levels in it oh and um then he posted screenshots in july and the experience bar was gone. The levels were gone. There were no levels anymore. And it seems like between January and July, he took the leveling system out of the game, decided to take it out of the game, and that's where he's been for the last three months. And then he just decided to launch the game this month. And it seems like the game wasn't really ready, even though he's been working on it for so long. Like, it seems like it wasn't ready, and then he wasn't prepared for the, the vitriolic reaction that the game has gone and as of recording it's been a day and a half since the game came out and he's been completely radio silent whereas the week before the game was coming out he was he was updating uh he was releasing patches daily and in sending out hot fixes and posting patch notes on twitter literally every day Hmm. um so they've gone silent and people think that he's just going to go back into a shell because this is what happened six years ago he uh the game got criticized but then he got ddos attacked like his website and he took that as a personal attack and kind of went into a shell and then nobody really heard from them for a long time until recently wow so it's an unfortunate situation because the game had a lot of has a lot of potential and i think if he um really endeavored to communicate with the community um, and take their feedback, I think you can fix this game really quickly. I don't okay. think there's anything endemically wrong with the game, per se. Like, I just think it's systems he needs to change, yeah. change around and stuff like that. And he already had builds where it was different before. He could probably revert, revert back, back to that, to that potentially. Build, yeah. and that might just solve the problem in and of itself. So, um, But the problem is the community has been pretty nasty. Some some people are really really taking this too far. Like they're 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 calling them scam artists. Which I mean, it does look that way. Like they released the game, got a ton of money off of it because this game is selling pretty well on Steam. Um, It seems like they just kind of cut and run. So I understand people from that perspective, but um, there are people, you know, flinging personal insults at this guy and his wife and. Um, it's not very civil. I will say the Steam reviews are actually surprisingly civil, despite the fact that they're overwhelmingly negative. <laughs> it's a lot of really constructive criticism okay. of the game. It, um, uh, they probably really care about the game. They wanted to do this community is really passionate, and as someone coming inside who learned about this game literally less than a week ago, yeah, um, it's been a wild roller coaster ride learning <laughs> about everything. Yeah, um, trying to figure out what the hell's going on here, and. Um, so given all that i kind of just decided to not even insert myself into this like i'm not even gonna try the game right now i'm gonna wait it's kind of weird though that this is going on and like no outlets are really no major outlets are really reporting on it or anything like that Um, i think i think centered in the reddit yeah but still like this is a it's still doing really well as far as sales wise i think it's just one of those games that at least that deserve have one article written about it. Like as I far mean, as like there, the controversy going on. Yeah, there were a yeah. couple that were just like short impressions of the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were negative impressions, um, both of them. So that's really all I've seen so far. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just like last week we've been talking about journalism and as far yeah. as gaming and how 
a lot of stuff has been lacking. Like a lot of major stuff has been lacking. There's so. a story to be told here. Yeah, there um, is. There definitely is, and it, it's sad because um, I really do think the developers mean well, but I, I think they are both people because it's 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 um, one guy and his wife. And yeah. They live in Germany, I believe, and I just think they are. They are. They have a lot of. I. I get the impression they have a lot of social anxiety. Yeah. And they're they're, uh, very susceptible to depression, and I think that's what's happened, to both of them, and they kind of, they kind of run away when things get hot, and that's not acceptable from somebody who's selling a product. It's not. Like, but it is a reality for some people. It is a reality. And, but, yeah, and, I mean, I don't want to be that guy. Like you know. But you, you have to take the good with the bad. If you're going to jump into the world, you got to understand. But I think more so on the consumer's ends, like I'm a consumer too, guys. But like we need to chill out with all the personal insults that we hurl. It's unnecessary. Even that, even at Activision and EA and stuff like that, I'm not defending their actions, but we shouldn't personally attack a lot of those people. Um, because like I think Dennison was telling us a case of, you know, one indie game that came out before and one of the developers committed suicide and no one knew about that but the community was really nasty really nasty yeah. and even though they didn't know about it it was still the fact that they were really nasty and it's probably killing the team's morale to even work on the game because they know this truth but the community doesn't know this truth and even if you come out and say something you're gonna have assholes who come out who probably said some visceral shit about that so yeah, yeah. it's it's a lose-lose situation so i think gamers <sighs> in general not even gamers but just fans of fandom yeah we, I know we're passionate about stuff. You saw with Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Harry Potter, mm-hmm. you know, everything of that nature. Like, I think we just need to chill out. Cause I think we get too invested in the stuff, man. Yeah. Like, it's not the end of the world that one video game isn't as good as you thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. There are thousands of video games to play. Like, I understand that, like, Cube World looked so cool and looked like... It did look cool. I was really excited about it until I started reading about the progression and stuff. Like, yeah. the way it was before sounds great, but at the end of the day, like, it's not your game. Like, he can develop the game however he wants. And exactly. yes, objectively speaking he should listen to feedback and should change things and should listen to his community because he's not going to have much of a community if he doesn't listen to them but exactly yep. if he chooses not to and decides to continue to go down this path of the the game he's made i mean that's his prerogative and i think it's something that is frustrating that's that's where the entitlement comes from is demanding that he changes things yeah like it's it's his choice whether he wants to listen or not and yeah your 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 way of of dealing with him or like like telling them that you're not satisfied is a constructive feedback b not buying the game or not playing the game not talking about the game anymore don't yeah. give them the time of day then don't spread the game that's that's how you that's hurt, how you, that's how you hurt them yeah. like financially you hurt you you hurt them financially i'm choosing not to buy the game because of all this shit yeah you know i don't i don't like the way they've treated people i don't like the way they've been silent i don't care how much anxiety you have you can't just hide away and run away from the world like you have to face things and if you can't do it hire somebody to do it for you yep you, know? you have yep. to recognize your own weaknesses and i think that's something that hasn't happened here unfortunately and um, it's a sad situation because I I really do think this game is not very far away from being very good. Like yeah. it, it doesn't need much. Like he doesn't need to change that much, you know. But I think um, some people were speculating because there was this game that I mentioned called Hightail. Um, it looks like Cube World, but professionally made, and it looks like it might deliver on the promise of Cube World yeah. in, to a, in a different way. Um, and some people were speculating that when that trailer dropped, he kind of shit a brick and was like, fuck, I got to get this game out, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. Because he was worried that if he didn't, his game would just look inferior Yeah. after that game came out. So he just kind of rushed it out the door because that's kind of what it seems like. It seems like the game wasn't... People People said the game wasn't ready and he didn't listen. They just released it anyways. Okay. Um, and another weird thing they did was not display the price prior to release. Ooh. Like, the game's price was not displayed. It was... 20, it's 20 bucks, but they didn't show that until release day, 
which is weird. I don't like. Yeah, why wouldn't you show that? It's like weird. It's like shady. Yeah, it's unnecessarily shady. But um, yeah. So unfortunately, Cube World doesn't seem like a game I can recommend right now. Um, hopefully, hopefully it turns around. But I don't know. Right now, it looks like. I mean, I could really see them just disappearing, and the game is what it is going forward. So, oh um, well. Yeah, so that happened, and now I'm like, I'm kind of in a weird spot. Like, I'm playing Monster on Iceborne, but I, as I said, I downloaded a cross code demo on uh, PC yesterday. I played about 15, 20 minutes, and games, 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 good. <laughs> I kind of want to play it. Hey, man, just get Catherine in full body and be happy. <sighs> I'm just going to play more Iceborne. I guess I don't know <laughs> You don't sound too happy about it but... I'm sad right now I am yeah, I'm just sad I don't know It sucks I was excited about Cube World Oh well Alright let's move on to the news We gotta get Montreal out of here guys um... Oh my Don't, don't you dare <laughs> Don't you fucking dare <laughs> All right, first story, uh, Bungie has announced that they are planning to have a non-Destiny game out by the end of 2025 I that mean, sounds good. I know they said they wanted to be a multi-franchise company. Um, yeah. Now, so I don't know if you remember, but maybe this was a deal with Activision. I don't know. But they were still in Activision when this rumor was going around. Mm-hmm. But this is when um, Bungie 2 was at its peak worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they did get in bed with Tencent. Yes, they which did. is the Chinese um, game company, or uh, no, not Tencent, NetEase. NetEase, NetEase. Yeah, they invested a hundred million. Hundred million into Bungie. So I wonder if, and I was hearing rumors that it was going to be an AP, which is a or not AP, but AR mobile game. I did hear that. Oh boy. Yeah, I, I heard rumors of that because I heard that they wanted to get into the mobile game, and NetEase is known for like I think mobile games and stuff like that. I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did hear that. So I'm hoping it's not that. Well, the quote via IGN is that our vision ultimately through 2025 is to become one of the world's best entertainment companies. Um, and, uh, part of our vision is to become a multi-franchise entertainment company. So that's really all he said. He didn't necessarily like confirm that a second IP is in the works but yeah and this game this game company that didn't invest 100 million so that's why I think they were willing to leave uh, Activision because they got that mm-hmm. money and uh, this game NetEase does specialize in PC and mobile games particularly the mobile market yeah. and they're like really good on the uh, stock market price their stock is worth like $200 it's kind of ridiculous a share yeah <laughs> so uh, so they're Huge. Yeah, huge. <laughs> so. Huge. Freaking huge, dude. But yeah, another quote. Um, uh, quote, so by 2025, we have a pretty specific path to make sure we transform Destiny and that we have other franchise within the marketplace. So he's basically saying there will be another game out by 2025. I, I mean, maybe it, multiple it, games. Yeah, it may, maybe it is a mobile game and, and and they get a lot of money from it. They it can might, support. It they, might only be one game, though. Yeah. Like, they, they might have a mobile game and then something else. Yep, you're right. So... I don't know. Uh, it's kind of exciting. It's interesting. I, I would like to see what they can do outside of Destiny. I mean, uh, I'm... I, they obviously have talent, so... They do. They do. And the fact that they have their own path now, that they're not beholden really to anybody, is um, good, yeah. I suppose. Um, as much as I've criticized them in the past, I do think a lot of Destiny's failures are at their feet. Yeah. Uh, they have begun to rectify that recently and it, it seems like in shadow keep looks like a huge step towards really making destiny to the game it should have been um but well destiny does have a, they made another game called oni that i really want them to kind of revisit the style and games mm-hmm. that they revisit um and it wasn't it was a shooter but it was a third person shooter and it was actually pretty fun and hopefully they'll like revisit other franchises yeah. or other genres of games outside the first person genre because you can tell they want to do that with destiny mm-hmm. but destiny's already solidified itself as a first person shooter yes yeah yeah and i'd like to see what they could do outside of the shooter genre yeah because um, that's all they've i like, guess most of what they've done yeah you know, it is mostly what they've done so we'll see that's exciting news all right let's move on uh oh boy here we Uh-oh. go Man, I, we do this like once a month i feel like so 
There was some there was some press for Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, today and yesterday, I think, and they revealed some new features. Um, there's going to be an <laughs> auto save. Uh, they said that experience sharing is going to be a default feature of the game, so now all of your Pokemon are going to gain full experience in every battle. I don't like the auto save. You don't like auto save? <laughs> No, what if I mess up or if I do something? I'm I don't want I don't want that. I guess that's true. Like I, if you if you go up against the like yeah, how's that gonna work when you go up against a legendary you're trying to catch? Yep. <laughs> See, and I can't catch it. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah. I don't like that. I mean, I understand why it's there. Maybe you had the, the the feature to turn I guess it off. They'll and change turn it though. The Pokemon won't like disappear if you fail to catch it. They would have like to change it, it. Like it used to. They would have they'll to. have to change that. Yeah. yeah. Or but, they can just give you the, the option to turn auto save off. Yeah. Well, so th- there was that, and then there was the ASP share that we talked about briefly. People yeah. are really upset about this. Like you said, I, I, I imagine people are overblowing it per usual, but I kind of tried to give you the devil's advocate of this because you didn't seem to think this was a problem. Yeah, I didn't at all. Um, that this kind of robs you of your own autonomy in yeah. the game. Like, you can't, you can't build your party necessarily the way you want, per se. Like I don't, I don't get to choose how my experience is distributed. And while that sounds stupid, probably to some people, to me that's a really important thing in an RPG. Like, and the and, way you explain it, because the way you're explaining it now, it doesn't register in my brain. But the way you explained it off mic, mm-hmm. I understood it. So, like, yeah, if you have like, if you're going against like a level sixty Charizard and mm-hmm. you have a level fifty Pikachu or sixty Pikachu. And you're like, hey, I want to throw this level 55 Blastoise in there to get the experience. That's a part of the experience of raising Pokemon. That's just, and it, and it's just like building your party. Well, now, like, because uh, like you put it in terms of like Fire Emblem for me, yes. and I wouldn't want everyone to get experience. Right. Like, yeah, imagine in Fire Emblem, someone kills somebody, and the entire party gets experience yeah. based off that kill. Like, that's I wouldn't want that in Fire Emblem. Yeah. And and the other thing that I mentioned, and this is important, is like. It changes the dynamics of battles now, too, because say I have a level 40 Blastoise, right, and then I have a level 30 Pikachu, and I'm trying to level that Pikachu, and I'm going up against a level 36, like, I don't know, Fire Pokemon or something. Yeah. You know, I might throw the Pikachu out there to fight the battle so it can get the experience, and I'm taking a risk because it's against the type it's not necessarily good against. Yeah. Potentially, but, like... It's, it's changing the dynamic of the battles. Now, with this, there's no incentive to do that. I'm just going to throw Blastoise out there and let him destroy it. And I never have to use the Pokemon to level it. Like, it, there's no there's no effort involved there. I don't like that because I mentioned the Gyarados thing with Magikarp. Remember how much of a pain in the ass level in a Magikarp was? Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, that's eliminated now. You, that have, was... you don't have to expend any effort. Yeah, that was a trade off though, because you get like Gyarados. Yeah, Gyarados, usually, yeah. Gyarados usually have really good stats, yes. and you get that that Pokemon. Yes, but yeah, like that trade off is really bad now because, or really, it's just a free, it's yeah, a free it's, powerful it's a free, Pokemon. Yeah, it's a There's free no powerful. effort involved. Like I just have to put it in my party. There's nothing interesting yeah, and, about that. And I understood that part, and then I was on the other, I was on the fence of, I was on the other side, like. Man, it's it's cool for me because I'm like, hey, I could just use one Poke or use the Pokemon I want to use. It's gonna make the game easy. It is gonna make the game easy, which isn't a problem necessarily. It's just that um, it is. But you have to be on the side. Like I said, it is Pokemon and it is designed for kids. Unfortunately, Mm -hmm. the franchise did not grow up with us. Yeah, and I will. I am making a prediction now that I think this will be the lowest selling Pokemon game. Uh, not because of all the controversy, but because I think, yeah, because of the controversy, and I think Nintendo really doesn't know its core audience. Yeah. I think the main people that have been supporting and spilling billions of dollars into this franchise are yeah. people from the ages of 25 to 30. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I just gonna take a stab in the dark and say, I don't think kids like 8, 12 are really playing this game like that. Maybe in Japan they are, yeah, but like, I don't think in the rest of the across the world they are. <laughs> They aren't because the game grew up with us. Uh, there are twenty year olds playing this game. There are fifteen year olds playing this game. And each of those age groups are able to play more, um, not mature games, but more experienced games yeah. where you can have a yeah. little more experience, make a little bit more decision making, and things of that nature. The game doesn't hold you. Another point too, which is like a minute point, but it is a point. The game 
is text based. Yeah. And certain children under the age of like maybe six can't really read that well. Yeah. Um. So, and it's not voice acted. So. Yeah, that was a really good point that you brought up. Like, if the game's gonna be catered towards kids, really young kids, like it needs to be voice acted. It needs to be voice acted then, because yeah, they they literally can't read the text. Like, we know we have a friend whose kid like really liked Pokemon. Let's go, let's go. But he couldn't read anything, so he yeah, he's would, like four or something. Like, yeah, he, he's, he's just running around until he he hits trigger, basically. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah. So that was a really that's a really good point. And I don't know, I like like I told you earlier, I feel entitled complaining about this constantly. I don't really care anymore. I I'm just like I, we were bringing it up because I think we want to just. It's interesting to talk about Pokemon, but um, because we were both into it, like we we're. I mean, we we're we're. I'm still a fan of Pokemon, but I am too. I want to. I want to love the series. Yeah, but I had. I mean, we both realized that we had to grow up, grow up, and let the series. Let it go. Yeah, let yeah. it go. Um, <laughs> the whole problem is I don't think a lot of other people have let the series go, mm-hmm. um, and there are fans they on both not. sides of the of the coin who unfortunately have the same viewpoints. In my opinion, you, you have people, even people who are saying like, "Oh, it's designed for kids." Yeah, but you're playing the game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Are you cool with that aspect of... I mean, maybe they are cool with the aspect that it's really easy and designed for kids. But, like I said, let's put this in perspective of Pokemon Masters that made $33 million in the first week, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or first month, rather. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those microtransactions weren't from kids. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those are from adults. Pokemon... Um, um, What's the other game? Pokemon Pokemon game. Go? Pokemon Go. 300 million in the first month. Has, yeah, Pokemon as a series has a very wide appeal. Yeah, and those are... I'm pretty sure all of those people are adults. Yeah. So, I'm not saying make this game or make Pokemon geared towards adults, but they can make it where they can do two games. They have enough money. This is a billion-dollar franchise. It's almost merchandise-wise bigger than Disney. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, they have the money to do this where they can make a more you know maybe a story driven folk Pokemon game that is a little bit more you know mature in its, in its telling but they can make a kids game kids version of the game too or continue to make the same you know colored Pokemon games or whatever the main title Pokemon mm. games so I don't think there's any excuse as far as that so I must say my main gripe my main gripe is not with the main Titles. My main gripe is with the company itself handling the IP. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that they should do. I'm not saying that. Um, this is merely suggestions. I'm not. They're entitled to do whatever the fuck they want to do. This is still making their money and everything of that nature. But this is a suggestion. Like maybe they should try to try that aspect of the game. And I think that's the main problem I have with them is they're scared to try. Whereas like, um, as much as I hate Bandai Namco. They take Digimon into different fronts. They try yeah, different things, yeah. and it works out for they them. They try different genres. Yeah, different Which, genres. Yeah. And it works out for them because they understand the audience has grown up with their franchise. Yeah, Even their yeah. anime has recognized that, yep, you know? Yep, so, yep. I don't know. I went off on a little tangent there, but that it is what it is. I mean, it's fair to say. I don't, like... Look, <laughs> we are not... Our opinions are not invalid because the series isn't, doesn't, isn't supposed... Isn't, like geared towards us anymore like we are the reason pokemon is as big as it is i was more invested than in pokemon than almost anybody i knew you know it, it how is it fair that they just decide that i'm not a, i'm not a valid audience for them anymore like it, 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 is that fair to me as somebody who was like super invested in this franchise for 10 the first 10 years it was around like i don't feel like that's true but one kid said that's entitlement it, it, sure it is entitlement. That's what I've been grappling with. Is like I feel, as I said earlier, complaining about this constantly feels like entitlement. But at the same time, Pokemon wouldn't be where it is without people like me, who played it when I was ten or yeah. eight or whatever, whatever age I, I was. I mean, this series has you know? grown up with this. It's it's. But I can flip that coin too, right? I can play devil's advocate and say, mm-hmm. what's the difference between Pokemon not growing up and Mario not growing up? Because Mario is essentially the same game. I don't like Mario. <laughs> well, you got the Mario Kart franchise. You got all these different yeah. Mario games that yeah. are geared towards children, mm-hmm. but adults play them. You know what I'm saying? Those games, though, 
they're it's a different genre so it doesn't necessarily it's not apples to apples like it's, yeah, and, and it's not all the way apples right, like it's I, like it's not like oranges to tangerines yeah. but like and but think about it though all the mario games i don't really like any of them Mario Party sucks now. It, <laughs> it hasn't been good in years. Yeah, it, you're right. Like, dude, it hasn't been good in a long ass time. Mario Tennis, uh, whatever. They don't make Mario Strikers anymore. Odyssey wasn't that good. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, Mario hasn't grown up, and I don't really play any of the games. So, I don't know. Like, it's it's just kind of the same thing there. So, well, I, because, look, I guess because you're not. You're not super in- invested. That would be a. I'm not. Bad, in, I'm not in a, as invested in Mario. Is, yeah, as in Pokemon. And and look, yes, I understand that being super mad about this is literally what we were just talking about with Cube World, right? There's other games out there I can move on. Um, but yeah. this series was really a defining series for my tastes in video games. This and, series got a lot of people into JRPGs yes, before they knew what JRPGs true for me. were. Yeah. It's true for me. And it just sucks that it left me behind. You know, it just decided that I'm not, I'm not, they don't want me, you know. Yeah, um, and- they don't want people like me. They don't care about people like me. And I think a lot of people have held on despite that fact because that fact has been true for 10 years and i think a lot of fans have held on to this series pretending that it is it is as good as it always has been it, and it's not and it's not and the reality I mean, is is that it hasn't evolved i'm looking at it i'm i'm really trying to look from an objective point of view because mm-hmm. i'm a huge pokemon fan and i'm yeah. trying to compare it to other franchises that have been out there and one franchise that kind of sticks out to me right that changes ways drastically it's Final Fantasy. That was bread and butter, a classic Japanese RPG game. Then it, then along the way, it started changing its formula. Yeah. And it wasn't afraid to evolve. Even as much shit as I give Final Fantasy 15, I'm glad they took that risk. Yeah. Now they know what not to do. What not to do. And I would want, like Final Fantasy 7 is the game that we're getting because. In my opinion, they took that risk with 13, they took that risk with 12, they took that risk with 15. And now we're getting this gorgeous-ass game, Final Fantasy VII. Like, I think Pokemon needs to take that risk. They need to take that yep. that next-level oh. innovation yeah. into it. When you compare those two franchises, it is hilarious how little Pokemon has changed and how much Final Fantasy has changed. Yes. And, and another those- franchise is God of War. Yeah. God of War is another one that that game that series went from a isometric action game that was like a Twitch action game to a story based third person action game, and there was no quality drop off. So you can make that transition. Yeah, and I, and the reason I went with Final Fantasy over like God of War is God of War has always been geared towards mature audiences. It, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Final Fantasy, people were playing that shit when they were like five, six. Mm-hmm. Even though they didn't understand what the story was going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it had some deep story, but people were still playing that. But that game managed to grow up with its peop- with its fan base. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that it, they knew their core audience. They knew their core audience was like, they went from six to seven. And they're like, yo, we need a more mature audience or a mature theme game. Each. Well, Sorry, keep going. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, each one got kind of mature, except for, like, maybe eight or nine. Nine. Nine was kind of childish. But, uh, but people like that one. People love that one, though. Yeah. But each story got, like, really mature and things of that nature to the point where they kind of went too far. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, we got to scale it back. Yeah. And yeah. I think with franchises like, oh, another perfect example. Kingdom Hearts that, is I was perfect literally, example. that's why I was interrupting you. That's yeah. the game I was going to bring up. Kingdom yeah. Hearts is a perfect example of a franchise that started with us when we were 15, 13, 14. It had this emo thing when kids were going through that phase, you know, and it didn't grow up with this. Nope. And, and it, it reaped... It, it reaped what it sowed with that. And exactly. And I think, I think the fan that's base why the for fan Kingdom base, Hearts... I think the King the Kingdom Hearts fan base is in a similar place to the Pokemon one where they're splitting. Yes. And I think there's a lot of people that are pretending that the series is in is as good as it has always been. Yeah. yeah. When in reality it's not. Yeah. You know, I think I think I think there's a lot of like blinders happening where, where people don't want to admit the flaws the game has. Yeah. And because they don't want to seem entitled. I I, I and 
Dude, Criticizing the game is not entitlement. That's not entitlement. Yeah, yeah and yeah. also asking for a product you paid for to be better is not entitlement. I'm sorry. Demanding that, a product to be better is entitlement. That's yes. Demanding a company change things to fit your framework that's entitlement. But criticizing a game so that it hopefully will be your criticism will be seen and heard and the developers will take that on and improve the next game using that criticism that's not entitlement yeah and you are open to criticize freely in a monetary transaction like that like i think again i bring this up a lot i think people always forget these things that we pay money to play these games it's not like it's some god-given right (laughs) that they're just gonna get our money like they have to earn my money. I don't buy games just because it's a franchise I like. Like, the game has to look good. Yeah. The game has to sell me on why I want to play it. You know? It's not It's not some, like, Cube World sold me and then I did some digging and then it unsold me. Yeah. Like, you, 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 don't, just, you don't just get a free pass. You know? Yeah. It's like, I think that's, a lot of people don't look at it that way and it's, it's. Yeah, it, and I, I mean, I agree. I agree 100% with you. Um, it's just hard sometimes because with Kingdom Hearts, that game did go through a stagnant period where it kind of grew up. The story mm-hmm. was getting a little bit more mature, and then yeah, they reverted backwards. They reverted backwards, and whereas Pokemon, the thing that the argument that it has against or that's that has it going for itself, it's always been designed for kids, yeah. always. Yeah, um, ones can counter that saying like you know. Uh, heart gold and soul silver like man that was designed for like you know true fans of the series and like yeah it was um because i mean i love gold and silver they're perfect the, the gold and silver remakes are the perfect pokemon game yeah and one can you know argue that but like i said i think it zelda is a perfect example of how you can mm-hmm. cater mm-hmm. both kids and adults yep. for a game yep um, casual or hardcore, like the game has its way to to be hardcore. Where Pokemon, I feel like Pokemon can be in that same aspect. You know what I'm saying? Like it can it can do it. The thing is, mm-hmm. no one wants to put the uh, game freaks feet to the fire and tell them, "Hey, try this." Yeah. Like the fans don't want to do that, and I feel like it's the same. I'm probably repeating myself, but like Kingdom Hearts falls into that category where the fans are like. Hey, what's going on? And it's it's a split now. Like that game three was the most divisive game, and I think Heart or not Heart Grown Soul Silver, but uh, Sword and Shield is going to be Kingdom Hearts three of the franchise. It's going to be that split because yeah. now we're starting to see the blemishes. Like it's it's there now. People are like, yo, they were using assets. They have billions of dollars, and you got people saying like, oh man, the developers though they they need this. They they have a lot of shit on their plate. So. Every game reuses assets, and people are like, well, you know, what about this XP share? And people are like, well, it's designed for kids, and it's like, this is a split. And I see it. Yeah. I see it on Twitter. We're I see it on the Reddit. Excuses for every decision they make. Yeah, and, and I, some of us don't care about those excuses. And some people are going to defend the game until. And some people are going to attack the, the game. And, and some people are going to attack the game until they're blue in the face. And and ultimately, though, when you are the Pokemon company and you have. Like you said, billions of dollars. This is one of the most lucrative IP in video games, period. No question. Yeah. And you can't... They don't look like they're putting the effort forth that a mainline Pokemon game should get. Yes. And that, I feel like, is undeniable. I don't care what side of the fence you're on. Like This game does not look like a game that is being developed by a company with as much money as they have at this point it's it's uh it's actually it's being shown in front of our faces yes um you can tell the game company that that's working on it they want to work on something else with the i think it's called little tail little town hero yeah like yeah. to me that they're working like this is the first time they're working on a game since another game since fucking forever like yeah yeah um so the, to me, that's indication that they want to work on something else, or maybe they just want to take the franchise in a different spin. Um, whether it be the power that be a company, the Pokemon company, or mm. Nintendo, or whatever the or case may be, or they're just so afraid. They're to so change. afraid of the of change. Yeah. Um, I feel like as much as people tell us to grow up, I think the the franchise, the franchise needs to grow up. Yeah. It does. Yeah. 
Um, but unfortunately, that's hey, look as we said earlier, they can do what they want. It's yeah, their game. Their, it's their prerogative. It's their right? game. It's their IP. They can I mean, do whatever they want. Merchandise we wise, here. they're like a company bigger than Disney merchandise wise. Yeah. Not just video games, but merchandise. Yep. Like toys, yep. po- trading cards, and everything. Yep. Companies want to be Pokemon. Yep. So I think that's that's crazy. That's a huge accomplishment. The idea that the thing that got them started, though, the video games, are becoming their worst, the worst part of the franchise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it sucks. All right, next story. So um, PlayStation abruptly announced yesterday that Sean Layden is departing Sony Worldwide Studios. So they tweeted this out. Uh, I quote, it is with great emotion <laughs> that we announced that Worldwide Studios Chairman Sean Layden will be departing SIE. I love when companies show fake emotion. Vid- visionary leadership will be greatly missed. We wish him success in future endeavors and are deeply grateful for his years of service. Thank you for everything, Sean. End quote. What the fuck is going on here? Sean Layden has been with Sony for 32 years. Well, they... They also got rid of, not rid of, but the head of, of the J- Japanese division, he stepped down. Yeah. But people were also saying that he's 60 years old, which is the average for a Japanese person to kind of retire out their yeah. role. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. It's it's just it's out of nowhere, though. Yeah. And this is with no fanfare whatsoever. Like, it's lit- this tweet is like the most bare bones lit- thing they could have done. I think him. he got, like... You think he got ousted? Yeah. That's crazy, I think though. it's like some Shark Tank shit going on out what there. What the hell, dude? Why? Because this is not like Reggie. Like, Reggie got, like... What is going on with yeah. this? Like, yeah, dude, Reggie got the red carpet yeah. <laughs> for him. He got his own video. Like, he got a fucking you know, Twitch man. stream going on. Yeah, man. Him and Doug Bowser got to have fun together. Yeah. On a on stream. Like, what the hell? I don't... Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Like... I, uh, it, it just, it came out of nowhere, and this is the last guy, too, basically, of the old guard of PlayStation, uh, corporate, basically, like, corporate executives, um, Shuhei Yoshida's really the only one left, and he's, like, doesn't go anywhere now. <laughs> yeah, like, he, that, that's they, because America, I think Sony America runs the show now, they right? They just shoved him in a closet, yeah, yeah, he, like, he tweets things out every now and then, but yeah, he doesn't do any appearances really anymore, he doesn't really talk much anymore, so, I don't know what's going on with Sony, like, they, they just seem, they seem weird. I'm really scared for Sony PlayStation 5 in the future. Yeah. Well, I'm not scared for the video games, but I am scared, like, the, I'm scared of the direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been talking about that a lot. I yeah. think that's a reality with them, as I think their direction has been uh, questionable. Yeah. And I don't know. It's it's abrupt. It's weird. It's out of nowhere. But I mean, they've been losing a lot of heavy hitters, though. Oh, dude, it's been happening the, this whole generation. They've just been losing yeah. guys left and right. I mean, one can say maybe just their time. Maybe they just they just feel like they need to move on it's possible but all of them i mean maybe they feel like they left the company in a good spot i mean maybe that that playstation 3 comeback was like really Very fucking impressive. good yeah and yeah. they just feel like they're in a good spot now but all the people involved with that are yeah they're gone now though it's yeah. like yeah it's nuts man i don't know so i guess we'll see we'll see the direction with them going forward but um hopefully hopefully it's nothing i mean i wish them the best and i wish yeah them- Hopefully it's nothing like serious, like it's not a health concern or but anything there, like that. There but. has been like rumors that, not of health concerns, but like that there is a power struggle within Sony right now. Really? Yeah. So interesting, man. All right, well let's move on. Um, Naughty Dog, another Sony related story. Naughty Dog um, was has been asked a lot about uh, multiplayer in The Last of Us Two because they haven't talked about it at all, and uh, they confirmed that it will not be in the game launching on February. 20th. Yeah, I saw a lot of people talking about this when the trailer dropped and yeah. they did the nine minute trailer talking to the developer, um, who looks like Shia LaBeouf, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't think this is a big deal. I think for me, it's good. I like, first of all, I, don't get me wrong, I did play the multiplayer game and I think it is really cool on the, yeah. the first list. And I know I know it had a very huge cult following. Yeah. Um, it was very, it was very fun. Yeah, it was very fun and. Twitch was heavy into it, and I remember a lot of streamers were twitching, uh, twitching that game, streaming that game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to me, this gives it more opportunity for the game to be more centralized in the story. 
Yeah. Uh, they divide, devote more resources to the story and the gameplay. Because um, they've been talking about that. Like, oh, you know, Ellie can do this. She can run, jump, duck, dodge, and sing. And it's like, okay, cool. Like, I want to see where this gameplay direction is going to go. So, I think it's pretty cool. I don't think it's the the end-all, be-all of this multiplayer. Well, I didn't finish. Yeah. So, they released a tweet, uh, Naughty Dog did, um, about multiplayer. So, I quote, an update regarding multiplayer. We wanted to address multiplayer in The Last of Us Part 2. As we've stated, the single-player campaign is far and away the most ambitious project Naughty Dog has ever undertaken. Likewise, as development began on the evolution of our factions mode from The Last of Us Part 1, the vision of the team grew beyond an additional mode that could be included with our enormous single-player campaign. Wanting to support both visions, we made the difficult choice that The Last of Us Part 2 would not include an online mode. However, you will eventually experience the fruits of our team's online ambition, but not as part of The Last of Us Part 2. When and where it will be released is still to be determined, but rest assured we are as big a fan of factions as the rest of our community and are excited to share more when it's ready. End quote. I mean, if that's not a confirmation that it's coming in the future, I don't know what is. Like, it just. Ooh, I think they're going to do a shared online world. It's going to be a Destiny S game. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Um, it's. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think it's clear they're they they, they, they're spinning something off that's separate and whether that's a full game or just kind of a solo standalone add-on i don't know but um i mean it could be it could be a solo standalone add-on i can really see though the last of us being a, a rpg type division type game sorry i looked at the number that just called my phone yeah and it was my number I just got a. I think I just got a robocall from my own number. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I should have picked it up. <laughs> um, anyways, um, I think it is clear based off this that they are saying that this is going to be on uh, PS5. Like they said, when and where it will be realized is still to be determined. I mean, the the where is obvious. Like it's on PlayStation. Yeah. So it probably is PS5. Um, the when is the question. Is it is it going to be next year? Is it going to be a couple years? Like, who knows? Um, yeah. It sounds like they're working on it, though, still. So I would imagine this is actively in development. Yeah, I can definitely see them taking it, like, as a, a shared online you think so? multiplayer ex- play I guess experience. So. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to expand a mode like that, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, because it kind of kind of reminds me of... Um, what's called arced online right Mm. you can have certain factions have their own place in the city and just build upon that and stuff like that yeah 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 so it'd be cool i don't know last of us part two would work pretty well with that too yeah it would that concept yeah i think that's why they're they're doing a separate experience because maybe the team wanted to do something like that yeah it's something i would check out for sure yeah like i i I think that world was perfect for that and then you can have the the uh the clickers and stuff like that be a part of the game that kind could be roamer, roamers or whatever. exactly yeah. yeah instead of just being human against human it yeah. could be pve pv yeah that would be really cool yeah and I, as i said the multiplayer in last was one was really stood out as a weirdly high quality thing yeah in an already high quality game yep. so um i'm excited to see what they have to offer with that their insistence though that this is the most ambitious project they've ever done i mean that's bullshit i'm <laughs> i'm just wondering how long this game is gonna be like i said this last time we talked about the last of us part two but what are we talking here 30 hours 35 hours like how much is too much uh, it's only so much i can do with a sob story well, the sob story and also a third person action game that is story driven. Like, yeah. sorry, dude. Like, <laughs> you're going to have to have more than just a good story, I think, to keep people invested in this. Yeah. Like, the reason God of War got away with being 30 to 35 hours is because it's a pseudo RPG. Yeah. You know, like, there's shit to do outside of the story. Yeah. You know? it's, they're going to um, have to go that open linear experience, but yeah. they, I heard that they didn't make it open world. It's like level based still. Okay. So, um,. Because they said it really didn't fit with the narrative aspect of, yeah, of um what they were trying to do with the Last of Us Two, and I mean, 
They could, but they could take a, a pinch from like you know God of War, still make it open but linear, like yeah. you know have certain areas you wide can explore. Wide linear, yeah, I like that term, wide linear. So, there's a couple ways they can do this franchise, but I, or that Last of Us Two, but I think maybe it's going to be like 25 hours. But they're talking like it's, it's about 50 hours. That's I mean, how they're talking. The Last of Us One is 20 hours. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's that long. It's a long game. Maybe it so, is. Maybe it is forty hours, man. Dude, the way they're talking about it, I, I just, I don't know. That's a long ass time. That's a though. long game. Uncharted is barely fifteen. Any of the <laughs> Uncharted games, and by the end of those games, I'm done with them. Yeah, there's only so much you can handle, Nathan Drake. Exactly, and that maybe play, Ellie's... that play style too. Yeah, like, that's true. Like the games are fun, but they're maybe not, you can play as multiple characters. They're not that fun, and they have different play styles. Yeah, that maybe. would be interesting. Yeah, maybe there's some Death Stranding aspect to this game. There's something that, like, there's things you can do that, like, affect later in the game, maybe. Yeah, I a lot of people are turned off by that game. I now. doubt it, but... Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I think that game showed a little bit too much. What can Brown do for you? Yeah. <laughs> I think that game's... I, I don't think that game's gonna... Norman Reedus. I don't think that game's gonna UPS flop. man. <laughs> I don't think that game's gonna flop, but I think that game's gonna... It's going to be critically hammered, I think. Yeah, because I think people are still expecting Metal Gear. I th- and they're not going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's move on. Let's get out. Let's exit stage, right? <laughs> um, uh, next story. This one is really interesting, actually. Um, so uh, this happened today, Dave, recording. Uh, Sony has uh, completely overhauled the pricing of PlayStation Now, which is their um, streaming service. Um that also allows you to download certain games. Um, they have... Uh, this is live right now, by the way. If you're hearing this, it's already happened. So um, they have slashed their per-month plan from $19.99 to $9.99 a month. Their three-month plan uh, down t- uh, from $44.99 to $24.99. And their annual subscription is down from $99.99 to $59.99. That is, the, that is actually to completely or that's to compete with xbox game Which, pass as far as i know game pass you can't buy annually can you i don't know i haven't tried it and is the pricing that good 60 bucks for an annual subscription bro like i said i haven't tried it i don't know let's actually let me look it up well I mean, so while you're doing that um th- this is an interesting change because they've added a bunch of new games um they added god of war the the playstation exclusive that came out last year Grand Theft Auto V, Infamous Second Son, and Uncharted 4, Thief's End. So three PlayStation exclusives and one that is is third party, which Grand Theft Auto V is, I mean, it's Rockstar, so... Um, they're only gonna these games are only gonna be available for three months though until January second, twenty twenty, which is weird. Um, yeah, apparently they, they, they well apparently their plan is to to rotate every three months um, some really high end titles. Okay, and they'll only be available for a limited time. All right. Um, and another thing I'm not sure about um, they didn't really say this in the announcement is if these games will be downloadable because they started adding games and letting them be downloaded rather yeah. than having to stream them. Um, I don't know if this this list of four games are able to be downloaded on PlayStation now. I would love to know that. Um, hopefully there's some clarity on that here in the future, but I think this is clearly a strategic move to um, put themselves in a position to compete with Game Pass going forward. And they already had this kind of here so I, i'm not surprised by this but the extent to which they have priced this is very competitive i mean 60 bucks dude for an annual subscription is that's uh pretty good i will say a caveat though is that i'm pretty sure you're gonna need a ps plus in order to utilize yeah. this so there's a built-in 60 dollar price tag on that on top of it so um the real price of this is one hundred and twenty dollars, probably, because I'm gonna assume you can't use PS Now without PS Plus. But, um, yeah. Did so, you find anything on Game Pass? So what I'm seeing here is, you can get a Xbox Game Pass for Xbox for twelve months in the United States from G to A for fifty four dollars. I can get one of the little uh, G to A though. Man, yeah. that site is really sketchy. All right, so. But I looked on the site and it says as of uh, this is as of July 31st, 2018. Mm-hmm. 
uh, that you can now prov- you can now buy an annual subscription for Xbox Game Pass. Microsoft is apparently providing fans a cheaper long-term offering for its Xbox Game Pass subscription, giving gamers the option to buy 12-month subscriptions for ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. So, but I do know with Game Pass, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you get uh, the Xbox Gold with it. So you get to play oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what they announced at um, uh, E3. Yeah. So I believe you do get that. You do get it Gold with it for free. Oh, I'm actually wrong, by the way. This is according to Sony's re- website. Um, PS4... And PS3 multiplayer games can be enjoyed through PS Now without a PlayStation Plus subscription. Oh, okay. But PS Plus is required for online multiplayer for PS4 games outside of the PS Now service. That's really interesting. Wait a second. So you could buy Call of Duty, or you let's I don't know. That's a bad example. (laughs) uh, Grand Theft Auto Four, actually, or Five rather. That's a good example. So you could play Grand Theft Auto V on PS Now online without PS Plus. That would that that's pretty awesome, actually. If that's true, that's interesting. Hmm, that's fascinating. So this is this is an interesting situation here now, um, because this is re- dude sixty dollars for an annual subscription is extremely competitive. Like that is a really yeah. That's a really is, alluring price, like to the point where I'm like literally thinking about doing it right now. <laughs> like, cause dude, it's a huge. Uh, the library of games on PS Now is gigantic. It's like I think it's like 800 games or something like that. Like, it's a really large catalog of games, and a lot of them are P- PS3 too. Like, there's some backwards compatibility through this as well. Um, yes, it's, you have to stream them, but you know that's better than nothing. And as I said, some games can be downloaded and played offline. So, um, interesting. It's, it, I'll be interested to see how they continue to expand this. I think the investment in PlayStation Now is, is obvious with this move. But, um, I don't know. Do you have any other thoughts on it? I mean, I think it's really good. From what I'm seeing right now, I think Game Pass, if you do buy it, I think you can only get the the game pass itself, not go. I think go is a separate thing. It is usually unless you get that bundle that's a hundred bucks. But if you don't want gold, then you're paying extra for something you don't want. Exactly. So it's so like, yeah, okay. So the bundle is a hundred bucks with gold. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to look that's for right what, now. That's what I remember from E3. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't want that bundle, then yeah, because um. And then they got a deal right now where you can get for like a dollar or some shit like that. But yeah, if you don't, yeah, I I think that's directly competing with Microsoft. The only thing Microsoft got on them now is the fact that one, you can download your games, any games, yeah. and two, new games are included in that in the Game Pass. Yes, that is something. Yeah, that's something. I think Sony will probably build on this over the next few months. Yeah. Probably the next calendar year. Is that, yeah, they need to start getting their first party games on PlayStation now immediately. And well, I, I, it's questionable though with this price tag, $60, dude. That is one game. That's the price of one game. Not to mention, I think people want Sony's backwards compatibility i would pay 60 dollars to access that backwards compatibility that's what i'm saying because this is the, this is their backwards compatibility yeah this playstation now. i mean i can't i can't play some games but like like yeah. the jrpgs i want to play mm-hmm. on the playstation and playstation 2 i can definitely do that in the stream mode like yeah yeah and i want yeah i do wonder how many games are going to be downloadable yeah so it's not a lot Okay. At the moment. But um yeah, the other the other thing, like, yeah, it's one game, so I do wonder if that price will kind of scare them away internally from putting new exclusives in I, there. I think so. I think this is only designed this is their answer for backwards compatibility in my opinion. Mm. For the moment. Yeah. Do you think this is gonna change again by the time PS five launches? Like they're gonna change the pricing and like kind of buff the offering at that point in time where they do include first party games day and date on the service yeah maybe you can see that yeah i can see that i mean i I think that's possible i think they're experimenting yeah i think i think this is experimentation thing i think with the ps5 though they're probably going to have it they're probably going to have majority of their library fully downloadable yeah 
Um, a lot of people are taking issue though with the fact that the games are only, like there's those four games are only available for three months. That is really weird. It's a, it's a it's a drawing. That's what yeah. it is. I mean, yeah, give you gotta take the good with the bad. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah, they don't have to put themselves in this position. That's I think that's how they're thinking about it because they're on top right now. Mm-hmm. Um, where Xbox, they have to put themselves in this position so they can directly compete with other people. Because, dude, Game Pass's offerings are really impressive. Yeah. Like, what they offer every month is a really good group of games. Like, dude, I think they just added... Um, I can't remember. It was something that came out really recently, though. It was, like, a couple months ago. Yeah. You know? Like, they're yeah. adding games that are relatively new to Game Pass, like, every month. Yeah, and, and you know? not to mention that you can get some other games. I think... Uh, I would be really surprised mm-hmm. if they put a uh, cyberpunk on their game pass list for like free, like not free to play, but like you can buy it with game pass. Yeah. Like you can just yeah. play it. Yeah. They, I feel like I see these stories every week. So here's one. Sorry. This is, this was like today. Um, Dishonored 2 is joining game pass. Ukulele. Uh, Felix, the Reaper fallout new vegas is another backwards compatible game they're adding um and then uh panzer dragoon orta Ooh, ooh. um the outer worlds is going to be joining the uh service the day it launches that game hasn't come out yet and thank you for reminding me a game i gotta buy yeah <laughs> well dude that yeah that, that's coming day and date on the service which i mean i know they own obsidian now but um still that's impressive yeah like they announced a whole bunch of shit for this month. Like they're doing this monthly. They're adding these games. And like, I, but I still think this is a direct competitor to them. They Xbox will probably have to step it up a little bit because mm-hmm. this is a good deal. We got, God, these services are starting to get really appealing. Yeah. Like, dude, I mean, I'm not kidding with this. Like, this is a really appealing thing that I think next gen, if game prices do go up the way that we think they're going to, like, yeah. if they go to seventy, man, like, I might just jump into these. You know, yeah. like, uh, like a couple of these. Because it's going to be cheaper overall than buying the games. Yep. You know, no matter what about the fact that I want to trade them in, like, with the access that this is giving you, it's like, it's just going to be cheaper overall to just pay for this and play them digitally, you know? Yeah, I mean, this is this is a really good move by Sony. I'm interested in seeing how this is going to play out in yeah. the long run. Um, only person that's not going to jump on board until five years later is Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Which they're the ones, dude, they're the ones that can blow everyone away, though. Imagine if they did it. Oh, my God, dude. Dude, I'd pay, I'd pay like, 150 for theirs. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Nintendo really doesn't understand their virtual... I, I, we said this. They don't understand their market. They don't understand they don't. the potential they have. They're they sitting don't. on gold. I'm pretty sure with some intern there, like, hey, man, all you gotta do is release the virtual console, a GameCube virtual console. People will lose their fucking shit, and it's yeah. accessible on the Switch. People will lose their shit. I think that's what they keep missing. I maybe maybe Virtual Console sale numbers weren't as good as we probably assume they were. They they weren't because I mean, their Virtual Console sucked. But yeah, that was because it was on a shitty console, yes. with a shitty interface, two shitty consoles with shitty interfaces. They don't understand that. And dude, you put that on the Switch. Give me that on the Switch. Imagine these are the main two, right? Ugh. To me, these are the best three. These are the best three with the best libraries. The DS, mm-hmm. DS library, they put down the Switch. Yeah. Uh, Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Put down the Switch. Oh. And GameCube. If they put those three virtual consoles on it, any one of those virtual consoles, they're they're gonna sell like hotcakes. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if they was like, okay, yeah, we're gonna um put. Hey guys, we're gonna announce the bait and take Kato's for our nurse, our first uh, release, or Mario Sunshine for our first. I'm release. dropping everything. Yeah, I'm dropping everything if they put bait and Kato's on <laughs> the Switch Virtual Console. Well, I'm saying, imagine they did that. Like, imagine they did the Switch, or they was like, "Oh, dude, we're doing uh, we're doing the DS." We're, our first release for the Pokemon, you know, celebration of the 25, 20, 30 year anniversary. Mm-hmm. We're gonna release. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver for the uh, Switch. $10 a pop. Nintendo, what are you doing? That game would probably be the highest selling Pokemon game. What are you game. doing? Yeah, re release Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, by the way, on Switch. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. I'll buy it again. I don't give a shit. I have it, but I'll buy it again. People, that game would probably be the Montreal best. Montreal will buy it. That would be the best selling it's game. It's going to outsell Sword and Shield. That's the problem. They don't, that's bad PR. 
that's bad PR. They don't want that. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, as good as this looks, we got to keep rolling. Yeah, got to keep rolling. With the we got to get Montreal out of here, guys. Oh my God! Don't, don't put this on me. <laughs> Next story: uh, Borderlands Three controversy. We've talked about a lot of controversies related to Borderlands Three. Um, one we haven't talked about a lot is the one related to Troy Baker and his kind of back and forth drama with uh, Gearbox, accusing them of not wanting to work with him, and Gearbox saying that, "Oh, we extended an invitation, and he didn't want to do it," and Troy denying that constantly. Well, he threw another accusation. Basically saying that they don't they they refuse to work with union talent um, in uh, when they were developing Borderlands Three and Gearbox has released a statement. Read that. This is wild. I quote: <laughs> Troy is an exceptional talent, and we were disappointed that he declined to partner on Borderlands Three after being offered the part. Hmm. We wish him the best hmm. and hope he knows the offer to collaborate with him still stands. Okay. Gearbox is a Texas company and is bound by Texas law, yeah. which means that a person cannot be denied employment because of membership or non-membership in a u- labor union or other labor organization. As a talent-owned, hmm. and talent-led organization, Gearbox enthusiastic works to ensure our pay and working conditions meet or exceed union standards. We also believe in hiring local voice actors whenever we can, which is why we're thrilled Troy's career really took off after working with us. I mean, what a middle finger to Troy Baker, first of all. Okay. That last sentence. So like, are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, hold on. This gets better. While we were taking a break a few minutes ago, sag has responded to this statement. As of a couple hours ago. Oh, shit. I quote. Player takes exclusive. I quote. <laughs> this is from IGN. We are fully aware of the anti-labor right to work for less laws that help explain why Texas has more minimum wage workers than any state in the union. Oh, shit. Employers in the Texas and other right to work for less states nevertheless routine, routinely work under sag after agreements with no legal obstacle at all. To the extent that Gearbox's statement reflects legitimate ignorance, Gearbox could easily have asked that question during their discussions with sag aftra which they did not. If, if indeed Gearbox meets or exceeds our contract standards in their treatment of performers, which we highly doubt, it would have cost them nothing to sign the union's agreement and retain the original cast of their game. While sag aftra does not comment on member discipline matters, we observe that sag aftra members who work for certain non-union employers not only deprive themselves of the benefits of a union agreement, they lower the standards for all their peers and facilitate the abuse and exploitation of performers. Wow. This is wild. Wow, indeed. Uh, Which Borderlands game was he on? Uh... Tales from the Borderlands. He played Reese, who so was the main that, character you play as. Read that last line again. In the oh, main... the, in the original? Yeah. Uh, which is why we're thrilled Troy's career really took off after working with us. All right, guys. So his career took off, but let's 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 look at his acting catalog oh my real God, quick. Yeah. So Man, what a joke. I'm gonna go just to anime. He was in Naruto. He was in One Piece. He was in Bleach. He was in Code Geass. He was in Naru- he was Yamato in pain in Naruto Shippuden, so that's just anime and that's popular anime and these were from ni- two thousand eight to well that Naruto was two thousand eight, and he was actually in voice work from like two thousand four, um, but I was just naming popular anime. So let's go to like uh, well, <laughs> video, video games. Video what games known for right? Yeah. Okay, so video games. He was in Brothers in Arm, Road to Hill Thirty, which is an excellent game, but. Uh, 2008, he was he was Laura Ural or Yuri Laurel in Tales of Vesperia. Was he really? Yes. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes. In Persona 4, he was Kanji. I've got a whole new respect for Troy <laughs> Baker. Holy shit, I didn't know that. He was Kanji in uh, Persona 4. Okay, yeah. Uh, I remember that one. Uh, he played, um, he plays, uh, uh, Joel in The Last of Us. Yep. That was kind of the role yep. that really, like, kind of blew I was, him up. I was gonna get to that. He was yep. a Joel in The Last of Us. Um. He had a partner in Charter 4 as well. Yep, exactly. Um. He played Batman he, in the Batman Telltale series. He was in the Metal Gear series. He's the piece while he was a soldier. Metal Gear. Oh, uh, no, in, uh, uh, The Phantom Pain. He played, um, he played Ocelot. Oh, shit, you're right. Yeah. 
So now, just to give you an idea, when Tales of the these games came out, let's see, that was two thousand eight for that was two thousand eight for Tales of Vesperia, <coughs> and what was the other one? Last of Us that Last came out us. before before Tales from the Borderlands for sure. Yeah, that was like two thousand twelve, I believe. <coughs> yeah, Last of Us was twenty thirteen. Yeah. Uh, so he was also Batman in the uh, Lego series. So oh yeah, he was Kai Lang in Mass Effect Three. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so this guy he was Ryu Hayabusa in uh, Ninja Gaiden Three. Dude, no, th- this like point being is that th- this is a clear shot across <laughs> the bow at Troy Baker. Like Gearbox thinks they're being cute. They think they're untouchable, dude. Like th- th- this is this is the most like cocky response I think I've ever seen a company give. They they don't think he has a leg to stand on with what. Like they're talking about here, but dude, he was doing Phantom Pain and he was doing Tales of the Borderlands in the same time because both of them came out in 2015. So he was going back and forth between those games. Tales of the Borderlands came out in 2014. The games that we mentioned that were way more, I think, critically mm-hmm. acclaimed, in my opinion, The Last of Us and uh, maybe not Tales of Vesperia, but a lot of people say that's like the best protagonist of the Tales series. Mm-hmm. Those are several years before Tales or of the Borderlands came out. Yeah. So, what the fuck are they talking about? Like you said, they think they're untouchable. That's very fucking facetious. It's, holy shit. Oh, it's a complete middle finger. Like, they're, they're just taking a shot at him. Like. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and dude, like, sag after obviously, their response is appropriate because, like, I, like, I just don't understand what Gearbox thinks like who's running the show there? Like obviously Randy Pitchford is. <laughs> they're like taking it. Like did he write this statement? Because he had to, that's man. what it feels like. He had that's to. what it feels like. Because dude, this is so tone deaf and just like like they, it just makes them look bad too. Well, like, bro, they're they're under that. They're epic, petty. They're under that epic umbrella, and right now they can't be touched because of Fortnite. Like, they're making billions of dollars off Fortnite. Or not, I don't know if they're making billions yet, but millions of dollars off Fortnite. Gearbox? They're under 2K. Oh, yeah, that's right. Which, I mean, 2K is just as big as Epic, but... Yeah. I thought, they're, I thought they had, like, a part... They maybe had a partnership with Epic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um... I think they use Unreal, actually. They do. Borderlands, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the connection. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, no, they, I, they're they're way too cocky of a company for someone that, as I mentioned last week, does doesn't make very like great games. Like honestly, honestly this has been going throughout all their games. Yeah. And, oh, and they were Vince, he was Vincent uh, Vincent Brooks and Captain Full Body, but um, mm-hmm. so um, I think this is just really disingenuous. It's, it is. It's, it's disrespectful. <laughs> it's disrespectful. Uh, 2K lately, I, they're under that 2K umbrella. Yeah. So 2K lately has been super cocky. Mm-hmm. They blatantly have a fucking gambling machine inside yeah. their NBA games yeah. after their whole loot box controversy. Yeah. So I don't know what the fuck is going on over there in 2K. I don't either. Um, but it's it's trickling down to their their child companies now and. I really think Randy Pitchford wrote this. He had to, because he's been quiet for a while. I think he literally used his company as a shield <laughs> to write this. <laughs> and they allowed it. But the thing is, they allowed it. Well, what the, what can they do? They can't. I mean, he's the CEO. They can't. Oh, he is? I think he's the CEO yeah. of Gearbox. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm pretty sure. Uh, or he, At the very least, he's the founder, I think. Um. Yeah, He. I mean, he's... Yeah, Troy he co-founded Baker. Gearbox Software and okay. serves as president and chief executive officer for the yeah, company. Troy Baker is one of the most requested actors for anything for anime, anything voice because he's such a good voice actor. Yeah, he was Joel and then he was Yuri. I, like those are two different voices. Like I do <laughs> think he's over. He is overcasted at this point. Yeah. I I can recognize he's like, his uh, voice. Nolan North yeah, Lane. he's like Nolan North. I recognize him in games now, and and it takes me out of the experience. But that doesn't change the fact that he's a great voice actor and he's very good at his job. Yeah, and I didn't like, even know he was fucking Joe. Holy shit! Oh yeah, dude, that is his like, that's probably his best role in a game. Damn, that's good. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. This is it's 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 childish. It's petty. Gearbox looks like children. I mean, they act like children. I don't like. I, don't <laughs> I know, mean, I... 
It kind of reflects. Have you played Borderlands? Yeah, I was gonna say. No, I was literally about to say that it kind of reflects in their games. Like it's just like that's the kind of games they make too. So I don't know. I I just I don't like. Oh God, I like, dude. They're gonna get themselves in trouble though. They're literally bringing up Texas law, saying that they they can't deny people employment based off being a union. I mean, sure you can't, but. If you didn't have anybody in the, in unions in your game, I mean that's kind of suspicious, don't you think? Yep. So I don't know. All right, I'm sure more drama we're, will we're unfold. Pro, with this. We're not pro union. We're we're uh, we're not you know any other side of the fence. But that was just a really really disrespectful statement. It is. It was. So, oh God, it's it's like a dude. I feel like I'm watching like a parody of, of yeah. like the game industry you know yeah that was like really disrespectful holy yeah. shit all right let's move on let's wrap the show up all right. um this is a minor story but uh brain age we're getting a new brain age game um it's been announced for japan it's coming on december 27th it wasn't announced for the west but i assume we will get this at some point in the future i kind of miss those games those are good brain exercise games i never played them um the last one was on 3ds i think yeah um yeah, I never played them, but dude, they were really popular. Yeah, they they actually like stimulate your brain. So it's an actual good game to play. Like you, if you got five minutes to you know do before work or something like mm-hmm. that, it stimulates your brain and stuff like that. It's really good. Well, along with this um, was the announcement that there is going to be an official Nintendo Switch si- stylus, and I'm sure it's going to be thirty dollars <laughs> <laughs> because you know Nintendo, bro. Their Joy Cons are fucking ridiculous. I gotta buy a new one because uh, she's noticing a drip. Isn't it, isn't it? Aren't they eighty bucks? Yes, it's their fucking a pair? ridiculous. Yeah, and she we noticing a drip in one of them, so I got I gotta I gotta buy a new That's one. That's bullshit, dude. Yeah, and they're not they're not good quality. The, no, the the lawsuit's still active for that. Oh, it is. Way. And they added the Switch Lite to it. Really? Which guess what? If you get drift in the Switch Lite, guess what? You fucked. Oh yeah, you're right. Because you can't replace those. Damn. You would have to take the switch apart, and that would good luck. Do, yeah. Yeah, dude. Like they they legitimately need to do something about the Joy-Con thing. So, but anyways, um, with the stylus, yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be way more. It's gonna cost more money than it should. But um, it's also announced for Japan. <laughs> Look at that box. That shit looks like it's thirty dollars. I know. I, I'm <laughs> sure when it comes. I'm sure when it comes here, uh, when Brain Age comes here, it will also come here. The stylus will also come here as well. So, <laughs> so we we'll put in there uh, Nintendo Switch stylus, ninety dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, what the hell? Like, uh, that is how they are with yeah. their stuff. Their to peripherals me- are their peripheral prices are out of control. Yeah, they're definitely the apple of like gaming. Oh my god, it's <laughs> so bad, dude. Joy Cons, they've been doing this every generation. Remember Wii remotes? They were sixty bucks. The Wii, the Wii Mote Plus cost a hundred fucking bucks. Oh my god! And they bundled that with Skyward Sword. And dude, the the Switch Pro controller is seventy. That's fucking ridiculous. You can get a PS4 controller on sale for twenty five bucks or thirty dollars. You can get an Xbox one for about the same price. Good luck getting a Nintendo <laughs> controller for that little. Like even good the, luck. even the third party ones are like ridiculously expensive they're like yeah. 50 dollars man no i yeah i would i just yeah and it, you can't buy third party joy cons yeah all and, right and they don't come in different colors like they're just the regular oh, standard yeah. you can't get them you can get them customized by other people but yeah this is bad well they do come in colors the joy cons they don't come in custom colors, like more creative colors and stuff like that. They come in the ugly, like slime green. And yeah, like put, slime orange. Put some like you know stickers or you know yeah. Mario designs or something like that. Ooh, Excuse bless me. you. Yeah, on it, but they don't do that. But whatever. Anyway, all right, let's move on. We're wrapping up here, man. We're getting you out of here. Uh huh. Damn. All right, uh, game releases this week. Uh, there's really not much. Uh, Cube World, don't buy it. Not worth your time. <laughs> um, Destiny Two Shadow Keep. Um, that's probably the biggest one this week, I'd say. Um, Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation Two. Uh, you ready for that? I'm, I'm over to mobile suit games. Yeah. Oh yeah, Gro- Ghost Recon Breakpoint came out today. Oh, it did. You excited? About the microtransactions? There's microtransactions in that game? Yes, there is. 
Yeah, no, people, pe- this was, this like snuck up on people because they literally didn't mention this at all. And it's just like people, I've seen, I've seen a bunch of stories about this today. <laughs> really? Yeah, man. Oh, man. Code Vein came out this week. Uh, that was last week, wasn't it? Oh, last week, yeah. Last week, yeah. yeah. Cube World coming out this week. Yeah. Uh, You got. Oh, Concrete Genie. I don't know what the fuck that it's is. PS- PSVR game. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport. Uh, what? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it says PlayStation hits and then Spec 2. So I don't know what that is. Interesting. Okay. Well, anything else you're noticing here? No? Probably not. Nope. Looks like some good stuff doesn't come out until next week. Yeah. Or a week after next, rather. Yeah, we got a little bit of a break here until middle of October. Um, the 25th is really the day that everything drops. Yeah, that modern warfare. Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds. You know, you have that on the list here. Um, and Midi, Medieval. Oh, yeah, that's coming out that day, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to wrap us up for this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. If we're entitled pricks, let us the fuck know. I, no, go off with me. Find my Twitter handle where he mentions it. Man, hey, he, don't he, encourage them to be mean to you. They they will I, oblige I, you. I can handle it. Don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, dude. You're gonna get off. I'm gonna I'm gonna see you. They they're gonna do it to you, and you're gonna get you're gonna come into work and be like, man, I gotta get off Twitter. I can't handle it. It's too much. Hey, People man. are being assholes to me. I've been attacked before. I haven't. Well, I've been attacked by no. like. I've had a whole like Beyonce stand oh, club yeah. hit me before. I've I've had people be mean to me, uh, like single individuals, never never really like a mob. Come yeah, I've, I've had uh, the worst. Well, this was at the in the, at their their infancy stage. Um, mm-hmm. What you call it? The fanboys, K-pop fans. Oh yeah, but now they're bad. I don't want to fuck with that place. I don't even say nothing about K-pop anymore because <laughs> you like oh, muted it and blocked yeah. the word from. Yeah, because if you jump on K-pop fans, they can like hack everything and like, oh, I got this one. I got this one. Yeah, they they've gotten people the fuck out of here. Oh man, it's wow. kind of scary. So, alrighty, well. I guess we'll leave you with that, guys. So, if you like this episode, please like the episode, review the show, and subscribe to the show on whatever feed you listen to it on. And if you could, please share it with your friends so we can grow the audience. If you'd like to talk to us, you can do so on Twitter, at iTrap for the Hokage for Montreal. That is the number four, not the word. Uh, you can get to me, at ThunderNet01, or the show, at the Players Take. If you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter, or you can send us an email to theplayerstake01 at gmail.com. Uh, next week, I don't know what we're going to talk about. Probably Monster Hunter. I'm going to get deep in that, I think, this yeah, week. Yeah, I'm interested in hearing your opinions on that, actually. Yeah, I'm going to probably get deep into it this week. Hopefully so. we can get Andy on there with us. Might get some more Fell Seal, maybe, in there. Might, might get back to that game, because I really do need to beat that game before the end of the year. Yeah. Or maybe I fall into a rabbit hole of CrossCode and just buy that game and ruin my life. <laughs> Can't wait till next year. Next year, what? Before they come on the Switch. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's supposed to, but I don't know. They're being weird about it. So, all right, guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed this one, and we will see you on the next one. All right. Bye, guys.